I'm Louis Gordon. Now, the mysterious Sanjiao organ has finally been discovered. The interstitium is one of its many assistants. Now, much of this is new information that isn't included in my book. How many organs are there according to TCM? There's 12. Now, a show of hands, please. Who here really believes that the Sanjiao organ is a real live fair dinkum organ or just a group of functions? Good. I hope there'll be more hands after this presentation. Now, first of all, the definition of the Sanjiao organ. When I was in second year, a long time ago, in the TCM studies, we were taught that the Sanjiao organ was present in the inner wall of the stomach. Now, I'm sure we've all seen references to that. I didn't comprehend how that could be the case, especially seen as a prevailing thought was that it was nothing but a group of functions. Now, that haunted me for decades. And I've come to realise that when the author of the name Ching, Yui Jen, stated it has a name but no form, he didn't say it didn't exist. It had no morphology, no defined morphology. Now, describe what a cloud looks like. Describe what the Pacific Ocean looks like or the air between us. How would you describe that? You can't. It's amorphous and so is the San Jiao. Now, first of all, let's define what ancient TCM physicians believe that the San Jiao organ actually was. Ancient TCM physicians described the San Jiao organ with the triple heater as nothing but membranes and the official in charge of irrigation. Now what are the membranes and what is the irrigation? I suggest that the numerous functions of the San Jiao organ are due to the profoundly remarkable physicochemical properties of the collagen molecule. This cell, the fibroblast, is my hero. It produces the second most abundant substance in the body, collagen. It's the primal unit of the extracellular matrix uh, or the connective tissue metasystem. Thus, I suggest that that cell is the foundation of the Sanjiao organ. The fibroblast produces collagen fibrils and uh, extracellular matrix, and that pervades our very body. The collagen molecule is the most abundant protein in the animal kingdom. It makes up 35% of all of the protein in the human body and in dogs and cats and camels. Gram for gram, type 1 collagen is stronger than steel. Now, some other properties of the collagen molecule. It's piezoelectric. Certain materials generate an electric charge when pressure or mechanical stress is applied. Now, collagen does exactly that. It has a role in signalling. Now, note the quote. The piezoelectric nature of the collagen-rich tissues has been known for some time, yet the role of collagen's piezoelectricity in the body has remained elusive. Collagen, it's fibre optic, just like our NBN cables, only faster. It's a semiconductor. It allows electrons to flow in one direction predominantly. It has incredible water holding capacity. Now many researchers accept that collagen is hydrophilic, while others describe it as hydrophobic. Hydrophilic means it loves water. Hydrophobic, it doesn't love water, like fatty substances. Now in actuality, collagen has a strong affinity for unbound water, and it can be correctly stated that collagen has a high water holding capacity. Now, amazingly, the collagen molecule makes up the stroma. The stroma, or the mesenchyma, is the underlying structural foundation or matrix in which other cells, tissues, or organs are implanted. The stroma is, and this is definition, the stroma is composed of connective tissue, especially collagen, and blood vessels. The support of stromal tissue anchors and permits movement of the functional parenchymal cells, tissues and organs throughout the body. 
Now, collagen, as I said, is fibre optic, piezoelectric, a semiconductor, and it's essentially hydrophilic. Now, that sure is a lot of chemical and electrical properties for what naive biologists believe is a simple support structure within the body holding all of our bits together. Now, let's discuss some of the properties of the most abundant substance in the body. Collagen is the second most. The most abundant substance is water. I suggest energy production in the Sanjiao organ is due to some of the amazing 64 anomalous properties of water. Now, time doesn't permit me to discuss in detail the truly remarkable properties of water. For example, liquid water, the only molecule like it is heavier than solid and subsequently icebergs float. The miracle of the water molecule is what makes every single protein twist and turn and do its function, it's especially enzymes. What do the TCM classics say about water and the triple heater, the triple burner? Now in commentaries of the 31st difficult issue of the Nanqing, Ye Lin relates, anybody posing such a question does not know that the influences are transformed from water. Now we're going to talk a lot about influences. All of that rests on the principle when fire meets water, a transformation into influences takes place. Now at uni we were taught that energy transfer was due to ATP. Now many researchers believe that ATP is given the credit for what water is actually doing. And again, when fire meets water, involves hydrolysis. What is exclusion zone water, or EZs? Now, Professor Gerald Pollack, one of the world's leading water researchers, states, the water molecule is so small that if you were to count every molecule in our body, 99% would be water molecules. That's molecule for molecule, weight for weight, about 60%. On that basis alone, it is inconceivable that water isn't a major play in the biochemical processes that we call life. Dr. Feridun Batmanjalij states, one major problem in the scientific evaluation of the body is the lack of understanding of the magnitude of our body's dependence on energy from hydroelectricity. We are hydroelectric beings. Now I suggest that the Sanjiao produces and controls irrigation and energy production simultaneously thanks to EZ production. So what, is, what are EZs? Now EZs, in the presence of sunlight, and in this room there is ambient light that was originating from the sun. So in the presence of light or photons, and especially biophotons, a battery is formed when water and hydrophilic substances come together. There's only three components. So in this diagram here, uh, this was from uh, Dr. Pollock, we have the hydrophilic surfaces in the presence of water and ambient light. The electrons flow on the side, and then a battery is generated because of protons flow and the electrons are on the other side. Now, how fire meets water? Omnipresent biophotons, which are in every cell of our body, react with omnipresent. Omnipresent means it's everywhere. Uh, with omnipresent water in close proximity to omnipresent connective tissues, which are everywhere, to produce ionised, electrically charged EZs with a formula H3O2 negative. So, light plus water plus connective tissue produces EZs. The majority of the water in our body is interfacial water. It's only a fraction of a micron away from hydrophilic membranes and biophotons, which are in every cell. So in these omnipresent locations throughout our entire body, the hydroelectric process of Sanjiao occur. Subsequently, the generated EZs store light energy, much like a battery, and they deliver energy throughout our entire body. Now, the numerous practical applications of EZs, which are present right throughout our entire body, one, it causes fluid drainage, two, driving of blood through vessels, 
and importantly, preventing leakage from cells. Now, Professor Pollock, he states, regarding EZs, their sundry actions include, four, reducing friction, five, wedging surfaces apart, six, running batteries, seven, driving catalysis, eight, powering fluid flows. Now, these eight biological and biochemical properties of EZs are identical to the many functions attributed to the Sanjar organ in TCM.